again talking about the physics of tennis. We're going to talk a little bit about the racket. We've got interesting effects with the racket, the tension in the racket, and moments of inertia and so on. Here I have a racket on display. I wanted to bring to light some of the so-called sweet spots in a racket. And there's one thing called the dead spot. Here if we examine the racket I have set up here, about right here will be the center of mass. Everything has a center of mass. Everything spins about its center of mass. For example, here's a dumbbell. This dumbbell, <laughs> I put the string right in the center at its so-called balance point, almost, all right? It will spin about this balance point, okay? You see, it spins about its center of mass. You uh, throw something into the crowd, baseball, bat, or something like that, it's going to also spin about its center of mass. Well, the tennis racket has a center of mass, and it would spin about its center of mass. Of course, you're holding the tennis racket, so you're not interested in throwing it into the crowd. Well, maybe if you get upset, don't throw it into the crowd, by the way. So you've got a center of mass. You also have three sweet spots and a dead spot. The dead spot is actually useful, and we'll talk about that in terms of the serve. About right here, you've got a spot we call the coefficient of restitution, or the best bounce spot, meaning if I hit the ball or hit the racket and ball meet about here, it's going to bounce the highest. And I will show you this when I put a racket here on the table on the end and drop tennis balls off of the end. You'll see the different bounce uh, heights. We have a center of percussion around here, all right? And we have a node minimum vibration, all right? And we're going to talk about them in about, oh, maybe a couple more minutes. First, I wanted to mention the moments of inertia of a tennis racket. Let me just move this over here. We have three moments of inertia in the tennis racket. If you saw the segment where I had the water molecule and showing you the three moments of inertia, well, the same thing happens with the tennis racket. We have three basic moments of inertia. This moment of inertia is called the swing weight. It's one of the out-of-plane moments of inertia. This is its in-plane moment of inertia. So its second moment, moment of inertia would be an in-plane. So swing weight is one of its out-of-plane moments of inertia. Here's one of its in-plane. And its third moment of inertia is a polar moment of inertia. So it spins out of the plane, okay? Twisting kind of effect. Some people have trouble with this moment of inertia. When they're ready to hit the ball, they start to do this. Their wrist isn't very strong, and they have problems with controlling the angle of their shot, all right? So with this twisting effect, is there a way that you can help your game? Well, yes. Increasing the racket head size, which they did many years ago, they found out that the moment of inertia would be larger and the twisting force, obviously, would be greater. Again, meaning to twist that racket versus the conventional head. So by changing the racket head size, you increase the moment of inertia. Well, how is this possible? Well, here we've got a circle. Actually, it's a hula hoop, but we can call it a circle. And I've got some weights here at the end. Sort of like the racket twisting, if I turn this hula hoop with the weights at the end, it's easy to turn, all right? Very easy to turn. Well, the moment of inertia is connecting the masses and their distance away from the center squared, all right? So, I for moment of inertia, capital I equals M times R squared, all right? So if this were the radius, we would square this, and we would have the masses apart in some fashion. If I move the masses this way, I have now increased the moment of inertia because they are further away from the center, and it will be more difficult to swing this or turn this, all right? So when I bring the masses further and further away from the center, the moment of inertia increases, and the force needed to torque this hence increases, okay? So that's the basic premise here with the increasing the size of the head or by putting weights on the sides of the racket. So you increase the moment of inertia by having bigger masses further away, okay? Either way, 
racket head size increasing or having masses on the uh, outside of the racket, on the perimeter of the racket. All right, so that will help you with your twisting problem. All right, again, back to the sweet spots. Actually, before we go to the three sweet spots, let's go back to the dead spot. What would be the use of that? Well, maybe in a serve, because you can use the dead spot, for example, in uh, transferring the rotational energy of the racket into the forward motion of the ball, all right? And you'll get to see this when I bounce the, the balls off the racket. So let's take a look at that. Stand up on here. Let's go to the dead spot off the end. It's kind of hard to do with the butt cap on the racket, but if you press down, you can see the difference in bounce heights. So I press down, I'm going to hit the dead spot, and it's pretty much going to end up dead. All right, so let's take a look here. All right, so there you see, pretty much dead. Hit another ball. It's useful for the serve, though. All right, so again, you can transfer the rotational energy of the racket into hitting the ball. Not a good idea for returning serve, right? You really do not want to hit at the dead spot. Sometimes I've hit at the dead spot and broken the strings here, so not a, not a good idea. All right, let's go back to the, to the node, which is called the minimum vibration point. This is really, when I hit this, I'm going to have a minimum vibration or the first node of vibration in the racket. And when you study wave mechanics, you'll get the do that in the laboratory. So I hit about the first node here. Okay, so we see a, a bounce. And then I move a little bit down, a little bit south of that, the center of percussion, and we'll talk briefly about that as well. Okay, an interesting spot where your hand is not going to feel the force of the ball hitting the, the racket so much. And then over here, I have the coefficient of restitution maximum here, the, the best bounce point, and you'll notice it does bounce the highest there, all right? So a pretty good spot occasionally to hit, although you probably won't want to do it all of the time. Okay, so let's go back again. Dead spot, all right? Minimum vibration point, about right about here. Co or excuse me, the uh, COP or uh, let's see here, let's put this over here. Center of percussion, right about here. And the best bounce point. Okay, so there you go. All right, let's talk a little bit about the center of percussion. If I take a tennis racket and I hit the tennis racket or the ball, if, obviously you don't want to do this, but if the center of mass is about here, what happens when the ball hits the center of mass point, there is no rotation. All right, when you hit away from the center of mass, there is going to be a rotation of the racket. So at the center of mass point, which obviously you do not want to hit in tennis, what will happen is just merely translation of the racket. So as you move away from this center of mass, you are going to now engage rotational energy. All right? So as we do this, we move away from the center of mass. I'm going to move into the center of percussion. Well, you hold on to a racket right about here, and there's really going to be a pivot point, all right, about right here in your wrist, or your, your hand, I should say. And what happens at the center of percussion is when you hit at this rotation point, we have translation at a minimum, all right, as it tries to rotate about this pivot point. So you're going to have less shock in your hand, and you'll feel that every now and again. So it's going to rotate about the pivot point. There's less translation of the racket as it rotates about this. There's actually a cancellation effect, so to speak. All right? So that's your center of percussion point. So this is where you really would like to hit the ball, either of these two sweet spots. And if you have to hit down here at the best bounce point, so be it. Be careful with the dead spot. Might be useful, though, in a, in a tennis serve. So these are the three uh, sweet spots and the, and the dead spot. So we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the racket in another segment. I'll see you then. Take care. I'll be out on the courts.